Good afternoon. Oh, the class is in the afternoon now? Cool. <laughs> Not that. I heard that all the way over here. <laughs> yeah, are, are you hungry or what? What's going on? Did you skip lunch? Uh, Jace. Um, why? Man, no one wants that nasty food in there. Um, that food is gourmet compared to what I had in school. Gourmet for the gashes and constipated, maybe. Well, while you need to eat something, regardless of what it tastes like, you know, we want our food to be tasty, but that's just a benefit. The matter is all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> 10 points to you. <laughs> we need matter because that's what we're made of. We get matter from the food we eat. And some of it is just more important than others. Glucose is one of those very important pieces of matter for us. And we're going to talk about glucose a lot in this course. So get to know her. But we are called heterotrophs. This word literally means other nourishment. This means that we have to get nourishment from other sources, which would be the food that we consume. And so do all other animals. We're all consumers. Some consumers only eat animals. They're called carnivores. Some consumers only eat plants, herbivores. And sometimes they eat both of them, omnivores. So... All of the food we eat just goes towards making the matter in our bodies? No, actually, most of it is broken down for the most important reason we need this matter. The energy that the matter contains. Energy makes the world go round, literally. And the flow of this energy through our ecosystems is so important to our survival. Energy is needed to do everything. All living things need this energy, and we get it from breaking down the matter in our food, making ATP during a process called cellular respiration. All living things? So like, well then how are plants getting their energy like they are? That plants break down the glucose too, right? right? If that's the case, so plants eat themselves? Like, yes what? and no. <laughs> so... If we are heterotrophs, well then plants are... Oh, how about... No. Just like an autobiography, or an autograph, or an automobile, plants are autotrophs. They produce their own nourishment. They're producers. Some bacteria can do this too. They use energy from light to make or to synthesize glucose. And this is called photosynthesis, yes. And a lot of people forget, you know, these producers also break down that glucose to generate energy. So plants do cellular respiration too, not just photosynthesis. They use energy? Like, um, so we use energy, like where are the plants getting their energy from? The sun, he said light. No, he didn't even say the sun. Yes. Now, you may think that the delicious food from the cafeteria started right there. But no, it started with the sun. The sun provided energy to the grain, the producer, which was fed to the chickens on a farm, a primary consumer. And in your chicken nuggets, they were fed to you, a secondary consumer. This is called a food chain. Food chains show the linear flow of energy through producers and consumers. So if chickens got their energy from the grain and they use their energy to live their best chicken life, whatever they're doing, how are we getting energy from them? And they're, you know, they're dead by the time they get to us. How do they still have energy and they're dead? Well, one very important topic Energy can't be destroyed and it, it can't be created. Energy can't be created or destroyed. That's the law of conservation. 
And when we consume matter from a previous level called a trophic level, we aren't getting all of it. The grain did get its energy from the sun, all of it. But when the chicken ate the grain, that chicken didn't get 100% of it or even 50% of it. The chicken only got 10% of the energy from the grain. What? Well, then what's the point of eating? Well, it may not seem like it, but plants, this grain, you know, they have a lot of processes to run just like we do in a plant life that it needs to live. A lot of its energy is dissipated or let off as heat due to all of the work that's going on inside of the plant. Therefore, once the chicken comes along, it can only get 10% of it. And after that, whatever eats the chicken only gets 10% of that. And it continues on and on. And this is exactly why most ecosystems with low plant life or low diversity, you'll find that most consumers can't survive there. You'll also find that there will always be more producers than secondary and tertiary consumers in a thriving ecosystem. And a great way to view this is in an energy pyramid. This graphically shows us the amount of energy available to organisms in each trophic level. Let's look at a practice problem. So if the grain starts with, let's say, 8,000 kilocalories of energy and 10% moves on to the next level. Well, how much energy would the chicken be gaining from this grain? Oh, it's easy. 800, right? Yeah. And how much energy would Gerardo get from? Uh, I would get uh, 80 kilogas. I mean, if I ate it all. And if something ate you, like a gator. I, I, no, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, um, 8%. Yes. <laughs> well, since we're on it, um, I went to Louisiana this summer and I had some tasty alligator. Ew, gross. Hey, don't knock it until you try it. It's very popular in that culture. But let's walk through this food chain. All food chains should start with... Ah, the sun. He was faking it. Look, look at him. He's better already. Well, technically, yes. But it's assumed that the sun is always the starting point. So we'll skip that. But after the sun should always be uh, a plant. Yes, but plants aren't the only producers. Right. Food chain should always start with a producer. So let's put one up here. Algae. Algae is eaten by these small things called krill. And these krill are eaten by a small fish called a bluegill. Okay. To me, this looks like the algae is eating the krill, which is eating the bluegill. It, it's just the way the arrows are. Well, remember that this food chain is about the flow of energy. So those arrows don't represent like who's doing the eating. The arrows represent where the energy is going. Hmm. I appreciate that. Yes. I'll rephrase. So let's say it this way. The bluegill gives its energy to a larger fish called a bass which then gives energy to the alligator, which gave energy to little old me. Wow. Now, we also know that every single organism in an ecosystem actually doesn't end up getting eaten or killed, right? In fact, most of them don't. I know I don't plan to. So where does our matter go? Um, do we, do you? I don't really want to talk about that. Well, you know, hey, sadly, all living things cannot live forever. And when that life ends, a very important player comes in to break that matter down and return it to the environment. And these are called decomposers. These could be bacteria, certain insects that you know, and, and more. First of all, back to that food chain um i had no idea that alligators even ate bass like what if a gator lives somewhere where there's no bass it's just what happens um it dies and just decomposes duh well i know i've been showing you this food chain but it isn't the best representation of what actually happens in an ecosystem you all know that this alligator and probably every organism 
It doesn't just sit around and eat the same meal every day, right? In fact, there are many other options. This is called a food web. Food webs are made up of multiple food chains, showing the various interactions of biotic factors in an ecosystem. I mean, if you think about it, we all want options. So it helps with the sustainability of an ecosystem, which is why, let's say, I mean, in our community, if we only had access to a McJohnson's and a Burger Prince. Uh, I have never seen those stores in my life. That does not add to the sustainability and that can produce problems in your ecosystem if that happened. You would want a variety of options, fresh fruits, vegetables, whole healthy foods, and you know, some junk food every now and then, but you know, that's not all you want. Same with ecosystems in nature. The more biodiversity, that adds to higher sustainability amongst all living things because all living things depend on each other and their environment. Like we said last class. You gonna say that every class period? Well, I lose track of everything you say every class because I swear every time I come in here, you're teaching a new subject. But you know, I I don't think I would mind eating McJohnson's every. Oh, it gets what? really old like, after a while, you know. But Burger Prints, they have them now. Oof, nasty. Stop acting like these restaurants actually exist. Who is he yelling at? Oh, okay, Lisa.